like we have lots of layers we're constantly like opening you know revealing new layers of ourselves sometimes it feels like we're breaking but we're really just opening like a lotus i love your bit but Um, for Christmas, I got Isaac like a like a gemstone digging kit. Let's see what we've dig up so far. I pretending to be a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. I pretending to. Am be I a pretending YouTuber? to be a YouTuber? Look at this one, mommy. Yeah. What one's that one called? I think it's this one, fluorite. Hello, everyone. It is New Year's Eve evening. 2022 is about to end in another five hours. We just ordered takeout food and the kids are currently getting bathed. Just a very simple evening. You know, like in your 20s, you're like, oh, I'm not doing anything for New Year's Eve. And then like in your 30s, you're like, I'm not doing anything on New Year's Eve. I was thinking about what I learned and I was reflecting 2022, usually end of the year. You're gonna see people who shared everything they achieved and things that they've grown, which is all wonderful. But there are gonna be people who feel like, oh my goodness, I haven't got, I haven't done very much this year. But that's not true. Like sometimes the biggest achievement is just surviving 2022 or that year. And I wrote a little post and what I basically said was, you know, three years ago, I was really drowning <coughs> in sadness. Realization that I had been living like a double life um, and just trying my best to pull it together. Um, and there's moments where, you know, I look back. Yeah, like I think back to like the moments where I just can't help but just break down in the middle of like cooking or playtime. And you know, your kids just, they're so young back then, but they sort of stare at you and they wonder what's wrong. And you feel guilt that they see that, but you're only human and you can't just, it's just impossible to have it together all the time and you know then I was so sure that they'd be scarred and they'll need therapy and they'll they'll be messed up from this divorce three years later like there's so much that I got wrong I thought I'll always be drowned in sadness and those waves don't even come up as frequent as they used to and when they do the magnitude isn't as strong as they used to be I learned that having PTSD doesn't mean I'm broken doesn't mean that I'm a burden, it just means I'm human and I'm not as lonely as I lead myself to be. Um, it's taken years for me to get this and I'm still getting it. Um, I'm still learning. Mama, hi, Dene. Oh, look at that. Draw oh, myself. That's amazing. No, no Look at the other one. Oh, well bye done. Bye. Um, last night we were in bed and they were like mommy I love you I love you and they like to like give little kisses but I was thinking back as a child how unnatural it was for me to say I love you never mind them just happily saying I love you mommy and it must be because they get it so much they're shown love that they're able to express it and truth of the matter is that like we're okay we turned out more than fine as parents you just want to give them the best of everything but truth is like kids need messy stories if you know how to make use of the mud you can actually plant really beautiful lotuses because lotuses do bloom in mud and we're all beautiful lotuses and we're all capable of blooming amongst the dirt we have lots of layers we're constantly like opening you know revealing new layers of ourselves sometimes it feels like we're breaking but we're really just opening like a lotus. Trust your journey, be patient with your healing. I don't know where they get all their energy from. We had the DDR map back then, they've got this. You guys, uh, earlier I was just doing my thing, I was getting ready to go out to get change to go and grab groceries and then Ayla comes up to me she's like really really proud she's like mommy mommy look so she's like mommy look and she showed me this picture right here which is beautiful um so for the past 
two years, I want to say. At least to me, she will always draw pictures of the three of us. And today, she has drawn an extra person. She's like, this is you, this is me, this is Gogo trying to hug me. She's like, this is Isaac. And I thought, that's amazing! And then she went on to show me more things. So yeah, here is a picture of a graveyard. <laughs> a picture of a gravestone with an attempt of Isaac's name. <laughs> she kills off her brother. And then back to a lovely picture of RG. I, but really, I think this is kind of a Easter scene. Hello everyone. Uh, it is almost mid-January. And yeah, I just took a shower. Um, I was really sweaty. Just wanted to come home and just wash. It doesn't make sense actually, because I didn't even wash my hair. Um, but I wanted to wash my body. You can see like the sweat running from my hair roots. Um, but like, that's my dilemma. Like, I don't want to wash my hair every single day because it just really dries it out. I noticed from the beginning of the month, I started to get, I usually get messages like these, but like, suppose there's a reason why they say January is divorce month. I've been getting a lot of messages just asking me how I got through it. And obviously every experience is gonna be personal, right? Cause individually, uh, we deal with things differently, right? Our upbringing, our genetics, our environment, all kind of like sculpts us to be who we are. So, you know, certain scenarios, we tackle it differently. You know, three years ago, I was really focused on survival mode. And then it went on to like, you know, healing. And I still am in this process. You know, healing isn't linear. Sometimes you take two steps forward and then a step back. It's not been easy navigating this journey through separation and divorce and co-parenting. In a lot of ways, I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, growing up, like we're so conditioned um, to think that a complete family is a nuclear family. And uh, half the kids, in Isaac's class are from divorced families. Yeah, so sometimes it's it's not just about learning things. Um, I had to unlearn a lot of things. I had to unlearn a lot of false beliefs. I've always been a very optimistic person. Um, I knew I'm not perfect and it felt really liberating to have that. I never felt the sense that I needed to be perfect. But, you know, after the divorce, I felt like it really hit me. Um, like my self-esteem was in bits. Truly, I wondered maybe it's me, you know, maybe I'm not lovable. You start doubting yourself and you lose pieces of yourself temporarily and that's okay. I realized that's okay. It's okay to get lost because then I'm given an opportunity to find myself. Imagine if we all have things figured out in life, right? Then how boring would it be? How boring would it be, right? I'm thankful that I'm given opportunities where I'm able to keep finding new things about myself. I'm able to keep learning and, and growing. I know there are a lot of you guys that are hurting, but I also know that during this time, um, you're about to get so much wisdom. No one likes change. Change is uncomfortable, right? And so is healing. Healing can be very, very uncomfortable as well, but it really is during the most difficult times that I gain the most wisdom and clarity because, because I think it forces us to seek deep, um, to find ourselves. But yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes painful endings can be beautiful beginnings. You know, it's like birth, right? Rebirth. And it's like a baby in a womb, right? The baby's safe, everything's taken care of. And suddenly, you know, if you were to tell a baby, you're gonna have to exit this place. And the baby's like, what? But like, everything's perfect here. Like, the womb is all the baby knows. If you were to tell a baby, you know, there's life outside it, it would say, no, 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 no. And then like, obviously, you, <laughs> the baby's born. You got this whole beautiful earth. I'm not gonna deny that divorce um, can be very difficult for the kids, but at the same time, I think from it, I hope my children learn to see resilience and the kids deserve to see a good example of 
what love should be. Okay, so yes, I'm not serious. I'm about to make lunch. Um, but yeah, what I want to say is it's been three years. I'm still processing. I'm still healing. I'm still, especially this year, like I'm hoping to really find my true self. Healing is one of the best forms of self-love you can give yourself. What's also really carried me through, I've always had hope. You just have to trust the good, the bad, the ugly, that this is just going to help you grow and you're going to somehow grow through it. You just have to trust your journey, you know, through life, you've always managed to figure things out. Just do your best to get up and move forward. You don't have to rush it. No one's racing you. This is your own unique journey. What matters the most is that you get back up. Thank you.